Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, number of unique integers after k removals. So I'm gonna show you a couple solutions for this problem, but more importantly, I'm gonna raise a couple points that hopefully make you realize that coding interviews can be more than about just getting the solution to a problem. So we're gonna have a couple discussions about that, but we're given an integer array and a second parameter, which is k, which is an integer. So let's consider this first example here. This is our array and k is one. k tells us how many numbers we can remove from the array, not numbers, I guess, more like elements. So in one operation, we could remove this four, or we could remove this five, or we could remove this five. It doesn't really matter which five we remove. I'll just tell you that up front. But those are the choices. Basically, we have two distinct integers in this array, five and four. We want to minimize the number of distinct integers from these k operations. If I were to remove one of these fives, we still have two distinct integers in the input. But if I choose to remove the four, then we only have one distinct integer in the array. And we want to return this value and we want to make it as small as it can possibly be. So immediately you could think of two approaches, possibly a brute force approach. But before you even go down that route, if you can think of a better approach or at least hypothesize one, it's better to try it. Like, let's see if we can get a greedy solution because it's kind of obvious here. Why would we rather remove the four? than the five because the frequency of four is lower. Why would we ever want to, with our K operations, try to remove an element with a greater frequency? It just doesn't make sense. So let's consider the second more complicated example. To first get the frequency of a number, how are we going to do that? Well, typically we do that with a hash map. And this is going to be really helpful for us because remember, we want to return the number of distinct integers we have left after the removal. So the best thing that this hash map is going to do is not only count the occurrences or the frequency of each number, but it's also going to help us eliminate duplicates. So might as well kill two birds with one stone. Suppose we do that over here. Let's just go through the numbers. I think one has a frequency of two, two has a frequency of one, three has a frequency of three, and I think four just has a frequency of one. So now when we get the length of this hash map, we know there's four. So this is kind of our initial result because we want to take this number and make it as small as it can possibly be. Possibly we can't make it any smaller. So this is what we initialize our result to. Now we have a couple choices of how we want to solve this problem. Like I said, we want to start with the numbers that have the smallest frequencies. It looks like those are two and four. And you tell me, do we really care about what the number actually is, whether it's a two, a four, a seven, whatever? It doesn't really matter. We specifically care about the frequency of that number. Just to make it clear, I'll add the labels over here. We want to go through these kind of in sorted order, don't we? We want to go through starting at the smaller ones. So we know hash maps are not sorted. So we have a couple options here. We can take these, put them into a separate array and then sort it. That's going to be n log n up front. And once we've sorted it, it becomes kind of trivial on how we're going to solve the problem. I'll quickly just show you. We'll have a one, a one, a two, and a three. We know k starts at three. So what we're going to do is say, okay, we started here. Do we have enough k to remove an element? Yep, the count is one. So we removed one element. Now our k is two. So now our result is three. But let's see if we can keep removing. We'll remove one because we can. We have now k equals one left over. Now we'll try to remove this one. We don't really care what number it maps to. It maps to a one, but who cares? Nobody does. So we can't remove this element though, because we don't have enough k to do that. So what we find is we have two elements left remaining. This is a perfectly valid approach. It's going to be n log n in the worst case, because we do have to sort the numbers. And in the worst case, the number of distinct integers could be the size of the input array. That's what I'm referring to as n. Now, there is another approach as well. Sorting is not too different from the heap data structure. So the other approach for us to do is consider using a heap, probably a min heap, because 
We can take these set of numbers and turn it into a heap with something called the heapify operation. That operation runs in linear time. This is a common mistake people make. Building a heap when you have the numbers up front runs in linear time. I covered this extensively, I think, in the DSA for beginners course. Okay, but just because we can get the heap in linear time doesn't mean we can pop elements from it in linear time. Popping from a heap is log n time. And in the worst case, we might have to pop every single number. If we have to pop every number and assuming like, let's say every number is unique, that's gonna be n log n as well. So it's not different from sorting, at least in the worst case, right? Well, big O of n is not everything. You tell me, practically speaking, in how many cases would we really have to pop every single number from the heap? Because in many cases, the K value is probably going to be less than like the length of this. So with the sorting approach, we have to run n log n. But even if every number is unique in the input, our heap, yes, is going to be of size n, but maybe K is really small. We won't even have to pop very much. And if this n term is relatively small, if it's like 10 or 20, it doesn't really matter. The n log n might as well be linear time. Now, not in the worst case, but practically speaking, this is going to be less efficient than the heap solution. And if you know how heaps are implemented, knowing that heaps are actually implemented with arrays, and typically arrays can take advantage of CPU caching, it becomes even more clear that generally heaps are going to be a little bit faster at least depending on the test case. So this is the solution I'm gonna code up, but I'm actually gonna show you a solution that runs in linear time right after that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create that frequency hash map, and we could do that just by iterating over this input array and just counting the occurrences of each value, but in Python, we can take kind of a shortcut. I justify it uh, doing it in this problem because we'll still have to do other things in this problem. So counter will basically create a hash map counting the occurrences. Now we want to turn it into a heap. So what we can do is get the values from the heap. Remember, we want the values, not the numbers themselves. That actually doesn't return a list. So what we want to do is convert it to a list. And once we've done that, we still don't have a heap. This is just those values. But to turn it into a heap in Python, you can do heap q.heapify, pass in the heap. And now before we start iterating over the heap, popping from that heap, we are going to set the result equal to the length of the heap. Because remember, we eliminated the duplicates. So when we got these values, the duplicates were eliminated. So getting the length of the heap will tell us how many unique integers we start with. And so this is what we're gonna return as well. Now, the rest of this is gonna be pretty similar to how the sorting solution would work. While our K is greater than zero and also while the heap is non-empty because maybe k is actually bigger than the length of this input array in which case the heap is going to turn empty before k becomes zero or it's possible that k becomes zero while we still have elements remaining so either of those is possible so we make sure we have both now what i'm going to do is pop from the heap by default python has min heaps so we know when we pop from here we are getting the minimum value and the value itself represents the frequency of a number not the number itself but the frequency so i'm setting that to f with that we're going to check if k is greater than or equal to the frequency, we have enough budget to remove that element. So if we have the budget, let's remove from the budget, and then we can also take the result and increment it by one because we just took one number and removed it. We could also just set result equal to the length of the heap. Doesn't really matter, but that is the entire code. So let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. Now, let me show you how we can create a linear time solution using the ideas of bucket sort. Suppose this input could be of size n. It could be really, really big. But what about these numbers? What about the frequency of any given element? Isn't it going to be bounded by something? Well, the frequency of any element is definitely going to be greater than zero because we're not going to count any numbers that show up only zero times. So it's going to be at least one. And the frequency is going to be bounded by something as well. How can a number show up more times than the length of the array? Probably not. So we'll say the frequency is bounded by n and one. Any of these given numbers 
will satisfy this inequality. Now, using this idea, and if you know what bucket sort is, you have a pretty good chance of figuring out the solution. If you don't, I do have resources, I think, that cover that. The idea is we will now allocate an array. N, in this case, is 7, so the length of the array is going to be N plus 1. You'll see why in just a second, so I'm going to set this from here, here, all the way up until seven. So the length of this array is technically eight, even though n here is seven. Now what we're gonna do is for every possible frequency, we're kind of just gonna iterate over the hash map and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, okay, we have a number with frequency of two. We do not care what that number is. We just know we have one number with a frequency of two. So we set here equal to one. We see now we have a number with a frequency of one. So we set this equal to one. We increment it by one. By default, all of these are going to be set to zero. Now, over here, we see we have a number with a frequency of three. So we take this value, increment it by one. Lastly, we have here an element with a frequency of one. We don't care what that number is. Who cares if it's four? So we go to index one and set this value incremented by one. It's now going to be two. Sorry about the readability here. But we have a two here, a one here, and a one here. The sum of all of these values is always going to be equal to the length of this. And so now what we can say is we just did this mapping in O of n time. And now instead of iterating over a sorted array that we have to sort with n log n time or popping from a heap, which in the worst case is going to be n log n, we are now iterating over an array of big O of n size. Now the algorithm would be pretty similar. So let's say our k here is three. We are gonna start, probably not at zero, we're gonna start at one. We're gonna see, okay, k is greater than two. By the way, what this tells us here is that we have two numbers with a frequency of one. So now we'll say, okay, we'll take those two numbers and remove from k. So now k will be left with one if our result was initially four, what do we do with the result? Do we subtract one from it and set it to three? No, we subtract two from it and set it to two. There are two numbers with a frequency of one. We just removed those two numbers, so now we decrement the result by two. Next, we go here. We have one element with a frequency of two. So from K, am I gonna decrement this by one and set it equal to zero? No, the frequency is two. If we want to remove this one element, we have to subtract two and then it will be set to negative one. So it's not possible for us to remove this one element that shows up twice. In other words, what we subtract from K is always going to be the product of the frequency times the number of elements with that frequency. And from the result, we're always going to subtract the number of elements that we were able to remove. Suppose k was actually equal to 1, and we have two elements with a frequency of 1. Well, we can remove at least one of those elements, and then we should be able to set result equal to 4 minus 1 equal to 3. And then k will end up being 0, and we will return that 3. But how do we do the math for that? Well, it's going to be kind of by uh, taking the k value, which here is 1, and we're going to divide it by the frequency of a number. So this will tell us how many of these numbers we can remove. We have two elements that show up once. How many of them can we remove? Well, we'll get 1 divided by 1, and we'll always round this down. So we'll end up getting one element that we can remove. There were two elements here. We're only able to remove one of them. And so that's what we would do. This math stuff will probably make more sense when we look at the code, though. So let's do that. And obviously, this solution is going to be a linear time solution. I will, I guess, keep the existing code here because it's not going to be too different from the new solution. We want to create that list I was talking about. Let's say it's a frequency list. Initially, it's going to be all zeros. And the length of it, remember, is going to be the length of the index input array plus one. The index, which is, let's say, the frequency, is going to map to the number of elements with that frequency. So this is why I say this part is probably easier to understand with the code. So now to actually build up the frequency list, we're going to go through that hash map. So that hash map tells us every number frequency pair in 
the hash map and we can say dot items as a way to get the tuple. So for every number, how are we gonna populate this? Well, we know the key or the index is the frequency. So we'll say for this frequency, we found one element that has that frequency. So let's increment the count by one, just like I showed in the drawing explanation. Next, we will initialize the result and we'll do it similarly as I did before. We could have done this earlier just by taking the length of frequency. That's the number of unique numbers. And now we will iterate over this frequency list. We will say for in range uh, one all the way up until the length of the array plus one, because we do want to possibly go to the last index. Instead of calling this I though, I'm going to say F because we know that the key of this thing is frequency. And I guess now that I think of it, why did I even put array here when I could have just uh, taken the length of the frequency array and then we don't need this uh, plus one. So maybe this is a better way to do it. We know that this is the frequency, but how many elements have this frequency? I'm gonna call that remove, by the way, because this is how many elements we're trying to remove. This will tell us how to update the result because we will subtract this value from the result. So this is gonna be the frequency list and using F as the index, this will tell us how many elements have this frequency. Now it's possible that K is greater than or equal to F times the number of elements. And so what does this tell us? The frequency times how many elements have that frequency. That's how many removals it will take. If K is greater than or equal to that, that means we can completely do these removals. First, we'll have to update K. We used this much budget, F times remove. And after that, how many distinct elements did we actually remove? Result minus equal remove. Remove is the number of distinct elements we're trying to remove. Now, it's possible we can't remove all of them. This is where the math comes in. And there are other ways to code up this part. You could use a loop if you really wanted to, but I will show you the math way. So it's possible we are able to remove some amount of elements, just not this many, or maybe we can't remove any of them. Well, we only know how many we can do by taking K and dividing it by F and then rounding down. Because Let's say K is equal to 10. And let's say the frequency of an element here is equal to seven. And maybe we have two of those elements. Well, 10 divided by seven rounding down is gonna be one. Or maybe the frequency of the element is actually 11. So this way we take 10 divided by 11, round down, it becomes zero because we don't have enough budget to remove even a single element that occurs 11 times. This is how the math works out. And so this is what we're gonna reassign remove to because then right after that, we can say result minus remove, just like we kind of did over here, except in this else case, now we know we don't have enough budget to remove any future elements. So at this point, we will break out of the loop and then I will return the result down here. This is the entire code. This is the most optimal solution. And you can see that even though we might have to build up an array of size N, which kind of is the inefficient part, in the heap solution, the heap might be far smaller than the frequency list. I think what you'll find is that this, in the worst case, might take up extra memory than the previous solution. But it does terminate early if we end up decrementing K. So let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. I guess the memory theory of mine wasn't so correct because this is about as efficient as you can really make it. If you found this helpful, consider checking out neatcode.io if you're preparing for coding interviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.